opening prayers in Tibetan. Last class. Way to hang in there. <laughs> Great. It's a highlight of my week. Oh, yes, me too. <laughs> I love it. That's good. I'm glad. Like food. Um, so two weeks from now, we'll start the next course on um, April 10th, and that'll be karma, how karma works. So that's really great. I'm excited about that. Me too. <laughs> Very important, right? To understand how it works. I was uh, invited to teach last weekend at the teacher training for uh, Open Door Yoga. Uh -huh. And um, they kind of let me, like, whatever you want to talk about is wow. fine. So I said, well, is it okay if I talk about how to take yoga off the mat? To your daily life, um, so I said, sure, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to do, it sounds good. That's the impression I got. So, I'm like, okay, I'll just go and talk about karma and emptiness <laughs> to this group. Yeah. But, um, and I was sitting there, and it actually was not. It's one thing to teach here to people who choose to come and who want to hear it <laughs> versus being put oh, in a situation yeah. where maybe not everybody's ready for that information and I misjudged that. Um, and, it, and because these ideas have become so normal to me, right? that's just what I'm thinking about automatically all day long. So that was for me an automatic thing, well, that's what I'm gonna teach because that is, I mean, that's the only thing that matters <laughs> really. And that's the only thing that will lead you to happiness. So that's what I want to teach. That was a no-brainer. But then when I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah, actually, <laughs> these ideas are rather radical um, that not everyone's ready to hear, right? Yeah. And it was a mixed group of people. And some of them love, love, love the information. I got emails after how grateful they were. And others, absolutely not. You know, there was one person that had no trouble telling me that. He thought it was all just a bunch of bullshit, right? oh. <laughs> and and that hey hi come on in, and that's totally that's totally fine, you know. 
Um, but it was a good reminder for me to, you know, to remind myself that these ideas are pretty crazy because they, they are the opposite of what, what we're used to thinking. Um, anyway, so now it was a beautiful experience, and I do feel that you know, anytime you teach like that, you are planting seeds and you are helping people, whether they're ready right now or not, doesn't really, you know. In my normal life, I wouldn't start preaching, I wouldn't say those people, but they were there, so they must have been there for a reason, right? To It was nice. Um, so we are talking today about, remember the last proof, last class? Desire, right? We're talking about desire. Mind getting the board for me? No, no, it's okay. no, it's okay. I forgot to. I write down a couple of things. Is it okay there? That's nice. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we were talking. The last, um, the last proof we were talking about was let's consider the mind of a normal person. Maybe not both. Yeah, that's, that's good. So let's consider the mind of a normal person at the moment of death. That mind will cross over. into a future mind because the state of mind at the moment of death possesses desire. So I'm going to repeat that. Consider the mind of a normal person at the moment of death. That mind will cross over into a future mind because the state of mind at the moment of death has desire. So it says, because of desire, the mind will continue on. That's what it says, right? right. So we'll cross over into the future mind. Yeah. In that state of death? Or in the, what was that last? It will propel you to your next birth, right? So the last moment of death. Sorry, at the last moment of this life. Because you have desire. So we'll try to unpack that a bit today. And remember we talked about, we, we had all these proofs on what cannot cross the mind, right? We eliminated so many things. So the idea was that we're left with mind. Mind must cause mind because nothing else can, because it's not made out of the same stuff, right? The sense powers cannot cause the mind because the sense powers are material and the mind isn't. And in fact, Dharmakirti's turning the whole thing around and says, not only cannot, can it not be the cause, but actually it's the other way around. The mind is the basis, mm. not the cause, <laughs> the basis for your sense powers. And with that, he implies not just for the sense powers, for everything, for everything you perceive, your mind is the basis. And I was thinking about that, you know, this week quite a bit. And to understand that, 
think we have to go back to explaining um, emptiness, which you cannot hear enough. So let's use this. What's this? A cup. It's a cup. To us, it's a cup. Okay. Um, if a dog would walk in, would the dog see a cup? What would the dog see? Toy. An object. <coughs> Something to, to play with, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or chew on, or, or just look at. <laughs> See if it tips over. Sure. Sure. Um, a newborn baby. See a cup? Mm -hmm. No. Would see. I don't know what a baby sees. Sees an object. I would think maybe they would see bright color, but I'm not sure babies see colors from birth. They might just see black and white. I don't know. Um, but I, they sure are not thinking. That's a cup. Mm -hmm. Have some juice. <laughs> They're not thinking that. I'm pretty positive. Okay. So what does that imply? It implies that the cup is not in the cup. Because if the cup was in the cup, if there was such a thing as cupness, then everybody would see a cup. The dog would see, because this would radiate and says, hi world, I'm a cup. You can use me to drink, you know. And it's not, right? To us, it's a cup. To somebody else, it's something else, you know. Someone who's never seen a cup in his life, who lives in the jungle somewhere, will not automatically think, most likely, that's a plastic cup, plastic orange cup. I couldn't tell you what they would think. Maybe they would see it as a um, tool to use uh, to get water from the river. They might, they might do that, or they might use it as, I don't know. <laughs> but they wouldn't see, hey, that's a cup, you know, and you spell it, C-U-P. <laughs> they, they won't. So that, that's emptiness, right? The cup is not in the cup. There's a lack of cup here. And that's such an important idea because it means if that's the case with the cup, it means that's the case with everything. I'm walking with my daughter along the street and I see a bike rack. There's no bikes in it at that moment, but she sees a climbing thing, right? Mm -hmm. She doesn't even think that's to put your bike in. No, no, that's something to climb on. Right? It's not a bike rack from its own side, because if it was, she would know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mom, next time we come here, we can put our bikes here, you know? But no. So every object is like that. It depends on your karma, whether you see this as a cup or not as a cup. It depends on your karma, whether you see this as a chew toy or not. It doesn't come from the cup, it comes from you. So not only is the cup empty of self-nature, everything else is, like I just said, which includes you. You have no self-nature. You are also a product a result of karma, right? The way you see yourself. The way you see you is completely different than the way I see you. And that can be tricky because we often think that the way I see myself, that's how everybody else sees me. When I'm having a lousy day and I'm feeling really insecure, it feels like everybody sees that, you know? And it's not the case. So you are a product of your own karma. The way you see yourself is always changing depending on what you have put in place to see yourself as. Right? 
right? Everything you say, do, or think is planting a seed in your mind. This will ripen those seeds into an experience of you, of your world. So if you can understand that, then that might help you understand that the mind is the basis to see your world. That has an organ. A, yeah, and it has a place, place, right? And it's in our mind. It's in our. It's in our. It's in our head. It's but the true. mind. The mind have, cannot locate it. You know, I I usually locate the mind with the brain. Yeah, I think many people do, but the mind is not the brain. And if so, where did even the word mind come from? Where was the root? And when you pass over, is it just air? Is it just, like, I always thought the spirit leaves your body. Mm. And I was like, oh, really? I feel like that leaves your body, but is it the mind that's connected to the spirit that leaves your body? Because <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Lots yeah. of questions. Um, so the mind, the way that the Buddhists of this lineage define the mind they say the mind is clear and aware that is what mind is that's the definition of mind so it's consciousness you cannot find the mind you cannot weigh the mind you cannot measure it it's so you know my mind i can be in holland right now i can sit in the living room next to my brother right now right now i'm sitting there right my mind has no, it can go anywhere I want it to go, right? There is no location. The mind is so big. So we're talking about desire today. Can I ask one more question regarding that? So when you're dreaming, is yeah. that the mind that's traveling? What else would it be? I always thought it was your spirit. I think. But I'm confused. It, yeah. Spirit and mind. Yeah. I think you have to find out what you think spirit is. You know. Got to think about that. Um. We have to look at the wheel of life again. To try to understand this desire thing. Because what do you mean desire triggers my next birth? What the heck does that mean? Right? So we're going to try to find that out. Um, Wheel of Life, again, it's a picture, not a super clear picture, but remember I told you that there's 12 links, and these 12 links depict the circle of suffering, okay, and you, you read them clockwise. So we, we are, this course is not about this, but we're, we're going to look at four of these links um, to help us understand. You know, I think there should be a whole course on trying to explain this thing. Um, but we're looking at four links to try to understand what we're talking about today. So link two, I said that before, this is a man making clay pots and making clay, 
clay pots um, represents creating karma. Okay? You're making karma during your life. So this karma is not ripened yet. This is creating it. Okay, that's what it represents. Then link number seven. Kind of a funny picture. It's <laughs> it's a man with an arrow in his eye. <laughs> and the man with the arrow in his eye represents feeling, sensation. And actually it can be either um, positive or pleasant. Uh, negative. It's just the ability to feel physical or mental pain or pleasure. So I think I'm not sure why they chose a man with an arrow in his eye. Maybe to make trying to remember it easily or something. Because um, it will spark like, oh yeah, that sensation <laughs> when you think of someone with um, okay, so that's link seven. You have a man with an arrow in his eye. Then link eight is a lady pouring wine or beer sometimes in a man's cup. He's feasting. This represents craving. And craving is a trigger for desire and rebirth in samsara. Then the next link, link number nine, is a person grasping fruit. And sometimes that's depicted as a monkey um, picking fruit. And that represents grasping to desire. So this is a trigger for desire and rebirth in samsara, both link eight and nine. The rebirth. And then link number 10 is a man and a woman lying together. Often you see this as a pregnant woman. Okay. So this would represent ripe karma. So link 10 is the same uh, karma as link number 2 where they're making the pots, but this now suddenly made potent. It's ready, ripe. And then there needs to be a trigger to make the karma right. And they say that that's the karma you've done during your life, physical, mental, and rebirth. And then at the 11th and 12th link, 11 is the image of a lady giving birth. That would be the desire that's triggered at the moment. So we'll be talking about this. The, the link 12 is old age and death. So how do the links in the wheel of life, in the wheel of life work and connect to the Dharma Kirti's argument about rebirth? Well, links number eight and nine, like I said, they are the triggers, the fuse for the body. For desire for to the next life and the triggers are based on link number seven which was the ability to feel right and it's mostly karma for this life but also past karma so when you feel pain or this desire not to be separated from its object. So what does that mean? All of these links that occur after you're born represent the milestones in the development in a person. So first, when you're born, your first sense organs, your first contact with the outside objects, first consciousness growing from those contacts, those consciousnesses start to have emotions and feelings. And then these feelings for food, sex, etc., are start to feel good or bad. 
So then what happens? You start to become attached to not losing the nice feelings or wanting to lose the unpleasant feelings. And that's where the problem is. <laughs> because then we act on that, right? We act on those feelings of wanting to keep or trying to avoid the unpleasant things, uh, which creates the karma. And you keep cycling. So they're saying that there's three kinds of cravings. Of the eighth link, right? Where you trigger a karma. So they, these are desires. So I'll write those three down. say dukse. Dukse is, uh, sorry, it's not the case. Do say. Do say. Do is desire and say is craving. So it's desire, desire, craving, this one. And this is the craving which desires not to lose an attractive object. A desire uh, not to lose an attractive object. The desire not to lose an attractive object. Give me an example of that, somebody, please. I don't want to lose my car. You don't want to lose your car. Okay. I don't want to lose your home. Sure. Or yeah, anything that you like and you want to. Or no. your friends, family, um, objects like cars or homes. Sure, any any of that, right? You want, you're desiring to not lose any of the things you like. Then jikse, say jikse. Jikse. Jikse is fear craving. Se is craving and uh, fear. Jik is fear. So that means craving which wishes to avoid unpleasant objects. So anything that is unpleasant to you, someone's yelling at you, you don't want to be near that person, right? Like that. Anything that's uncomfortable and you wish not to be near, that is And then the last one is Cise. Say Cise. Cise. C is existence. C is craving. So this is the craving for existence. And this is a craving which craves for yourself at the moment of your death. Cise means the craving for existence. This is a craving for me due to intense fear that I am ending. The type of craving that will fight back to maintain your life. Uh, you know, there's people that say, I'm not afraid to die. But if you would hold them <laughs> at the top of a building, you know, most likely they will freak out because of that one. Existence, they are scared to lose this me, right? This is also something you can encounter in meditation. I don't know if you've ever had that, but um, 
at the moment where you go into deep meditation, you can have that feeling of um, intense craving to leaving your body or something like that. It's good to investigate that when that happens. Like, what is it really that I'm scared of? What does that mean that I'm so desperate to keep? So the craving that triggers rebirth involves all three of these, but mostly the last one. The last one, Sise, existence craving. Because it's grasping to the sense of self. So what's the difference um, between link eight and nine? Eight was craving and nine was grasping, right? You could see it as nine would be an intensified version of eight. So grasping is much stronger than craving. So apparently, number nine is is grasping there's two kinds uh, of degrees of the emotional function that triggers the rebirth and the first one is um, your desire that you don't want to end comes really powerfully and the second one is that all everything that leads up to that moment where you don't want to end. So those are the two degrees of emotional and mental function that trigger your rebirth. So think about that for a second. So when, when your desire to not end, to not die, And then when everything that you've built up to that point. So what I understand is that it's really important. Your state of mind at the moment of death. As is everything you're doing up to that point. And you know, you can say like, well, what the heck are you talking about? If I fall out of the plane right now, I'm not going to be thinking about Dharma kids arguments, you know. I want to think about shit, dying. <laughs> what can I do to not die, right? And and that's exactly it. So if we can um, start to think about this during our lives and start to plant different seeds, then at the moment of death we can have a completely different experience of when we do that. Okay, that's a bad thought. What about people who commit suicide? Mm -hmm. They're not triggering death. Are well, they are not? They? You don't know. Yeah, you don't know. You know that I read somewhere that um, the people that jump off bridges, all the ones that do survive, they all say that as they were jumping down, that they felt regret. Now, I'm sure that's not the case for everyone, but I thought that was an interesting point. Well, obviously not in the right mind, right? Because we're not chemically balanced. That's true. Okay. Karma to pay for our lives. Mm -hmm. We're not thinking of the future. No. No. They want to be uh, uh, done with pain. They want to be done with pain. Yeah. So that is this grasping, right? right? What we just talked about. Uh, one of those... Uh, right. One of those, Got which it. one was that? Uh, second one. You want to oh. avoid unpleasant objects. Oh, right. Yeah, you want to be avoiding yeah. your own pain. Yeah. So. You don't want it anymore. So they're thinking that that would be the only way because they've tried everything or they just don't have the energy to deal with it anymore, right? 
what if they have a pleasant thought? As I mean, then you that would be really difficult to do. You're in pain, so you want don't want to feel the pain, so there's no way to think. I'm just thinking, what about people that do do this for an act of? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking in um, Iraq, for instance, mm-hmm. where these you know set themselves up to save their country. Yeah, it, well, it's different. It all depends on your motivation. Depends what's on your mind. Mm-hmm what other rebirth you will get but generally what's said it's not promoted <laughs> to kill yourself in well, Buddhism no, I, yeah, <laughs> you know? no, this is it it's, I'm just like, because I'm they're because of killing is considered as uh, something that plants negative seeds mm-hmm. if you would kill another person then you are also a person so if you kill yourself that is considered you know that that will send you to lower rebirth however there are different ways, different things you can have on your mind uh, as you're doing it. So I'm not, you know, I can't say what would happen uh, for sure. But generally, um, yeah, it's said it's not, not a good idea <laughs> because, you know, it's a misperception. People think that when they kill themselves, they're done. But in well, fact, they're not done, right? They just keep going. I agree 100%. I just, in these countries, they actually totally, anyways. Yeah. So, um, who cares about any of this? You know, what's the relationship of the triggers and craving for a self, you know? I think the whole key is ignorance. Not understanding the cup. Not understanding how you exist. We think of ourselves as an ignorant in an ignorant way that we truly exist. And if you want to find the way that you see yourself in an ignorant way, you know what's a good thing to do? Get blamed for something you didn't do. <laughs> then that me that's desperate, you know, you, you know, you know. Me? <laughs> you know that feeling? How dare you? Talk to me in that way. Well, that exactly that. That is the ignorant. That that is the grasping to the self that we believe to be true. And that's the one that we need to see so we can get rid of it. Because that's the one. That's the thing that causes you pain. This tight grasping to uh, thinking you are self-existent versus thinking I am a product product of deeds, right? Everything I'm experiencing right now is because because of everything I've put in place. So one moment I can experience myself as confident, beautiful, radiant because of how I've treated others in the past. In other moment, I can be blamed for things I didn't do because I have blamed people before. I have not taken responsibility for my own actions. You know, I have treated people a certain way and that's why I'm experiencing myself in this way. And if you can do that, things will not be so painful anymore because it just, it's not, you know, you can see it's not true how you think it is and how it really is. So, so if you had to give some practical advice, yeah, what would you think? So, we, so let's say I'm dying, and what what am I thinking? I'm gonna obviously be thinking about who's gonna take care of my kids, but I don't want to go there because mm-hmm. then I'm gonna be reborn again, probably somewhere else with kids and whatever. Who knows? Or another birth. So what do I think? This is my karma. This is my karma. <laughs> I keep saying that to myself. <laughs> no, let's 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 go through the rest of the class, and and you'll probably get an idea of what we're trying to say here. I, I have a question connected to that too. So if my question is, is, so what do you do when you're in a situation where you're being blamed for something that isn't? Do you just stay strong in that and just like allow you, yourself to be? You have no control in that moment. The only thing you have control over is how you're going to react, right? You have no control if the whole world is blaming you for something. It's a result of your own actions. So if you can see that in the moment, that's that's an amazing thing to do. 
And however you react is going to build your future. So you can make a decision. I can't tell you if the best thing at that moment is to shut up and say nothing or if the best moment is to try to plead your case. You know, it depends on the situation, but the main thing is to understand where the whole thing is coming from, you know, and your motivation, your intention is to become an enlightened being where you can help all people, you know, where you're not concerned about this poor me that's being blamed for something I don't do, you know, you just gotta let it go. Let go and understand, and actually, you can feel regret for the people you have mistreated because that's the only reason why it's doing that now. You are creating your future, you every moment of the day, so you always have a choice. Um, yeah. I was, um, my daughter, she uh, really wants this really expensive doll. It's called American Doll. And it cost an absolute fortune. And um, and I thought, you know what? This girl never wants for anything. She never asks for anything. She doesn't want anything. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to help her get this thing. And um, because she's always so giving, like she blows, she always blows me away. She's always making me offerings every day she always takes care you know she makes lunches for her brothers and you know she's crazy and um so i said to her well you have this little kitchen wooden kitchen that you no longer play with you can try to sell it and that would you know pay for half the doll possibly so she said okay okay so we clean it up and i took pictures and i put it on craigslist and you wouldn't believe the line of people <laughs> That is emailing me that want the kitchen. Why? And this is her karma, right? Because she's caring for other people all the time, people are dying to come and give her the $60. <laughs> you know? If you have the causes into place, if you are treating people, you know? And then what she says, when I told her, you know, she's like, what? You just put that on the computer. And then she says, I gotta make sure that my friend Sutota gets money from me because she should get it all too, you oh, know? Oh. Still, it's not about her. She, she wants other people to have it too, you know? That's her whole mindset. Well, if you live in that way, then anything that you ever wanted will come true, you know? If you care for other people all the time. It's really beautiful and it's really quite simple too you know it's kind of nice to live that way to have others in mind you know it makes you happy it makes you feel good and then uh, just as a side effect everything will just fall into place and you know and there's t 10 emails waiting for people who want to buy your kitchen <laughs> and that's how it works you know it's very clear to me so We, I think we need to simplify <laughs> our way of thinking, uh, you know? Anyways. So, what, so the key is ignorance. We have to try to see that we are not this fixed like the cup. We are also, however, whatever the karmas we have in place, that's how we see ourselves in the moment. It's always changing. So we can always work on planting the seeds to turn yourself into a tantric being, turning your world into a paradise. And if you can keep in your mind other people all the time, then it powers the whole thing up. Make it less about you, make everything about other people. So then the statement is given. Um, so if you, I'm going to just read that out, I'm skipping the Tibetan way right now for a second. The statement is given, if you, if getting rid of this wrong view of seeing things as ignorantly, if that could stop your rebirths, then at the beginning of the path of seeing, which is seeing emptiness directly, right, you wouldn't have to take rebirth again. 
That is a statement. So when you're going to see emptiness, say, no. If getting rid of a wrong view, ignorance, if that could stop your rebirths, then at the beginning of the path of seeing, you wouldn't have to take rebirth again. So if you haven't seen emptiness directly, like are you going to be reborn again? Because you're um, you are. A, yeah, yeah. Because you're going to have an impure thought. Absolutely. Regardless but this statement, potential. yeah, this statement is not accurate. It's not. Mm, okay. Because it would mean that, that if we would see emptiness directly, that then we don't have to take rebirths anymore. And what is the definition of of an aria of someone who's seen emptiness directly. Like, what does that entail? They've entered the screen, but they haven't eliminated all the mental afflictions. Exactly. When you have seen emptiness directly, you understand, you know where things are coming from all the time. You know that you are projecting all the time. You understand that things aren't coming at you, but you are creating your you know that for a fact after you see emptiness directly. You understand, you have no doubt in your mind that it's any different than that when you see emptiness directly. You've seen it, you know it. You, have, you know how many lives you have left, you understand that there's a way out. By now, knowing how things are truly working, you cannot actually create any more suffering after you see emptiness. Yet you still see things as self-existent. But you just know that's not true. Like I give the example, you're walking around in Disneyland in the horror, how do you call it, the haunted house, and you just know that it's not true. You know what you're seeing isn't happening. It's happening, but you don't buy it. So that is when you see emptiness directly. So you still take rebirths after you see emptiness directly because you still have those seeds. So when you die, you still see things as, as self-existent. Even though you don't believe it, you still have the seeds to see it. Okay. But after you see emptiness directly, you are clearing out all your negative um, deeds. You're not, no longer creating any more causes for suffering, right? So that means you're on your way to become what? Arya. You are an Arya. You're on your way to become an Arhat. An Arhat is someone who is in Nirvana, okay? Someone who no longer sees things as self-existent, you know, and you see it that way. You're no longer, and, and, and you have eliminated all of your bad thoughts when you have reached Nirvana. You have no more bad, bad experiences. Okay? Everything is becoming bliss. And in fact, they say if you have bodhicitta, the wish for all living beings to become enlightened, um, while you become an arhat, you actually are entering Buddhahood on that instant. Mm -hmm. So, when you are an arhat and you become, you're dying, you're shedding this body, you don't. An analogy, <laughs> the way I kind of perceived it, if it's correct or incorrect, is I almost see our bodies as a pot mm -hmm. that's been used mm -hmm. because it's been through lifetimes, mm -hmm. and it's how we scrub it on this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So some of us just kind of scrape it, and it's still dirty, mm -hmm. and so you could be like a arhat, but you're not an arhat, mm -hmm. 
for some of us just to see it. So it's like who did she do? So oh, you see the dirty pot, but you're not ready to clean it, and you want to give it love and kindness to kind of clean, do the best you can to start to clean the pot, mm -hmm. and then the inside of our body or the inside of our being, and then the ara is I'm going to make an effort to clean it. And you clean it, and you think it's good, but it's not quite as clean and pure as this pot needs to be. Mm -hmm. Our our pot, our body. And then the our our the Anna would be would be the, the pot is clean, but it's clean as best as you can clean it. But there's some stains in it. There's those stains cannot just be removed because the pot has been stained, and you can't clean it. It has to actually go in for a spray, <laughs> or it has to go in for a I don't know a something where it can be really cleaned up. Okay, well this is sweet. This is sweet. And I think it's I fine. Think it's it's not visual. really completely correct everything you say, but it, it's it fine. Exactly you can correct. see you can see it as as a dirty pot working its way through all the stages of washing it until it becomes completely pure. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Yeah, but not right. everything you said in there was uh, fully it's, correct. Because, I believe, but that's okay. But the, but you got the gist of yes, that's what we're doing. We're so going we're through all the stages of scrubbing and, you know, removing all of our ignorance, all of our yucky stuff, and, and eventually we'll be shiny. Right. Yeah, we actually transform into a much nicer pot than we were ever were. Like, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> we think it out. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And there's stage. Okay, good. That's, <laughs> I, I need a visual. That's how yeah, my mind works. Yeah, no, you can use a pot. That's, okay. that's fine. Um, all right. So, so when you are an Arya, and who someone who has seen animals directly, right? Um, you will have rebirths, like I said, but they will be uh, beautiful rebirths because you are on your way out. You will live lives, your future lives. Often they say, and it kind of depends what where you're at, but it could be anywhere between 7 and 16 lifetimes when you are in Arya, um, when you become fully enlightened. Yes, if you're on your, you know, speedy tantric path, you can actually do it in a lifetime when you see animals directly. Um, but if you must take rebirths, they will all be pleasant. You will have everything you need. You will come in contact with the Dharma at an early age. Maybe not in childhood, but fairly early, and you will continue you know, to study. You'll have teachers in your life. You're, you're good. Like, you will live very beautiful lives. Do you have the wish to see an Arya in this lifetime? There's probably Arias around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would know some? You, you would know some. You recognize that Arya. So, would you be at liberty? Um, to other people, mm -hmm. it's generally something that's kept private. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it will depend entirely on you know the virtue, I guess. Yeah, generally when you see emptiness directly, it's not something you're going to spout out from to, to everyone. It's something that you keep, and then those who have the virtue to see you will come. <laughs> so you have the virtue to see. Okay, this person is. Aria, this person is an Arha, and this person is a Buddha. Is that? Um, and they're around us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are. They are. Yeah. There's some, there's some people that a lot of us can see, and there's some that only some can recognize. I mean, say the Dalai Lama, he's someone that a lot of people see mm -hmm. as special. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people see him as the Buddha or as an Arya. I don't yeah. know. I cannot yeah. say. Yeah. But I, I would agree that a lot of people see something there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They might not know what it is. Yeah. Um, so depending, I guess, on your schooling too, you would label it differently, too, right? You would. It 
that doesn't mean that we don't have that screen and that we cannot see him as really special. You know, we don't have the language that we happen to learn here, right? Yeah. Let's take um, a two minute break. We're very close. Yeah. You might have to leave. Yeah. No, I'm glad you came. Ah, me too. I don't think it's very hot though. That's nice. It's one where you have to do. Nice to see you. Peach ginger. I don't know if you change your mind. I think it, it looks delicious, but I just, I'm not even craving it. Okay. I offered it to her when she got there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's getting married next week. Yay. <laughs> Best of luck. Oh. What day is it? The 28th. Good morning. You're more than welcome to come to the church if oh, you wish. Oh, that's very kind Augustine of you. Augustine's on uh, our view to since 8th, I think it is. Our view to since 8th. Okay. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon. If you, yeah, that's okay. open. Public oh, open. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Best of luck. So the, there's four ways of perceiving yourself. The first way is seeing yourself in an unanalyzed way. Unchecked, seeing me, sense of, sense of me, I see. Um, anybody has this, even, uh, Buddha has this. If somebody would walk up to a Buddha and take their bowl, the Buddha would think, oh, they took my bowl, right? They, 
there is a sense of me. Okay. Then the second way of perceiving yourself is seeing yourself in an ignorant way. Okay, this is me. Believing that I am, I want to be happy, like this in the self existent way, right? Where we generally look in the wrong places. We think, you know, if I only have a nicer partner or a better job, nicer car, more money, if I don't have um, that annoying person in my life, if I don't have this debt, or you know, like that. That's thinking of yourself in an ignorant way. That's the second way of seeing, seeing self. The third way is an aria where you don't believe things to be self existent, but you still see them that way because you still have to see, to see them that way. But you're slowly getting rid of those. It doesn't have to be slowly, actually. Mm. So that's the third way. And then the fourth way is you're a being that no longer sees or believes things to be self-existent, which would be who? An arhat. Sorry? An arhat. An arhat or? A Buddha. Or Buddha, yeah. So those are the four ways how to perceive yourself. Now, which of those four would trigger a rebirth? Number two. Ignorant me. There's two that trigger rebirth. It would be one or two. No. No. Because remember I said the first one, even the Buddha, Buddha used to say, that. say that would have sense of self. there's nothing wrong with having an awareness of me, right? It would have to be two and two then. It would. Because an Arya yeah, at the time of death will still have the seeds of seeing things as self existent. So their rebirth will be um, they will have a rebirth. A pleasant one. But there will be a so in the first or last way, you know, especially in the, yeah. Does an arhat still have negative karma? They don't. Actually, they say that arahats do have piles and piles of negative karma, mm -hmm. yet they don't experience it any, anymore because of their state of mind. Like I like to see it as it's way in the back and it will never have a chance to ripen. Mm -hmm. And then when you become a Buddha, it just you know, disappears altogether. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you are an arahat, you have no more mental afflictions. You have no more... You are happy all the time, right? You have nothing anymore that ripens um, that would make you feel, you know, angry or anything like that. There's no because there's no trigger for it. And the body will need to go. Of an arhat, so we still die. The body has impure parts, they say, right? So that one will need to shed because it was born, it needs to go. Um, but they no longer need a new body when you become, you know, when you become a Buddha, you don't need it. You can do whatever you want. So as you can see, like at the time of death, you know, I said that 
in this class. At the time of death, it is important what you have done up to that point, what you have put in your mind stream. And it is important how much of a grasping you have at that time. So that's why we're here, to loosen that grasping, right? To understand that we are empty like anything else to loosen that grip, to eventually have no grip at all. And then when we die, we don't have to be reborn suffering again. That's why we're here. To become. That's why we're here for this life or in this next life? <laughs> Both. Both, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here to learn, right? To unlearn. Mm -hmm. this <coughs> grasping to this me that doesn't even exist. It doesn't exist in the way we think it exists. Um, let me see if I have all the answers. Do. So that this class So when you ask me what it is that I need to do, well that's to become an Arya <laughs> as soon as you get <laughs> right? It's not to get triggered. So something crappy happens. Don't put new causes into place for more crappiness. No, annihilate it altogether by bringing wis wisdom to the situation. So creating new patterns. So what I try to do is have some mental thoughts. This is my karma, this is my karma, this is my karma. So I'm not thinking, try not to think <laughs> <laughs> about it. Yeah. And that's, I don't that's know perfect. That's perfect. Sure, if that works for you, then that's fine. And over time, you don't have to repeat that to yourself. It just becomes, you've told it 100,000 times to yourself at some point. Yeah. It will just become automatic, and it won't face you anymore. You just know, okay, this is happening. All right, you know. Yeah. That's okay. You don't get afflicted anymore by the certain state. And, and you'll notice that less and less will will get you in the way, you know. You know, when at first your grip is so tight on this knee that you feel like you need to protect and then as you understand more that that gets looser and looser, right? Until it's like it's fine. And one other thing that I wanna say, like that is freedom when we don't grasp to things. That is what freedom is. It doesn't mean longer need to work or you have enough money no they have the saying in one of the scriptures that I love and it says before Buddhahood chop wood carry water after Buddhahood chop wood and carry water so you can have a preference because if there's a plus minus again and you, you can have a preference I prefer tea over coffee then you've got to say that if I don't get my cup of tea, I'm okay. Sure. Well, you just know that it's your karma to prefer co a coffee, tea over coffee. And whether you get the tea or the coffee will fully depend on have you given others what they wanted before. And if you don't get your coffee or tea, then that's, that's the reason. Yeah. So you know that, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean... In terms of the grasping after no you other. can oh yeah you can enjoy it's not that we shouldn't enjoy anything like we should enjoy life you know yeah and the idea is to to enjoy it and be blissed out every moment of the day yeah and you're in love with everybody and you can help anybody at any time so yeah we should love things and, yeah. and it's 
find you to prefer chocolate over cookies. Yes. Does, does it become grasping like, okay, I have the ability to sit here and drink five cups of tea versus one cup of tea and just be satisfied with that walk away? Does the grasping, like it becomes an addiction when you want more and more and more, right? That's the grasping aspect. Is that right? When you think that it will make you feel good, okay. that's the grasping. When you think that the tea has powers to make you feel good, then there's a problem. But if the tea has a power to, I'm feeling fuzzy in my head, I need to get a little bit alert, mm -hmm. that's okay. The tea does not have the power to give you more alertness. It doesn't. But my karma. Your karma. Allows me to... my, you might have the karma to perceive the cup of tea bringing you more alertness. Yeah. That would be the vehicle, the delivery system, right? Okay. Um, but it's never the, because sometimes you drink tea and you feel tired. Sometimes you feel, you, you drink tea and you feel alert. Sometimes you enjoy it. Sometimes you don't. Like it's yeah. not the tea. Yeah. It's you. It's your past deeds that dictate yeah. whether the cup of tea will give you what you want or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yes, you can absolutely want to have a cup of tea. But you just know whether I will enjoy this or not will entirely depend on how I've treated my life. Yeah. yeah. How are you, Twan? <laughs> All right. We will end the class then. So we'll end with the prayer. Sashi Bhuti Jokshinitu Thank you, Lala, for these two teaching us. Please teach us more. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So we don't prostrate at the last class. We never do. So we keep it going. <laughs> and in two weeks, we'll start ATI 5 um, Karma, which should be very interesting. It's a good course, important course. So we have posters for that soon? There's posters already. already. Yeah, could I it's hung up there. I'll take it with me and photocopy and post them. I can email it to you. Okay.